kids grow fast and the new school year means parents shelling out for new uniforms. The last thing families need is they worry about soaring costs. Joining me now is Labour MP Mike Amesbury, who changed the law to make uniforms cheaper. And Emma Cantrell, the CEO of First Group Children's Charity. Mike, uh, well, good to see you both. I'm going to start with Mike. Uh, you changed the law on school uniforms. You did that as a backbench yes. MP. What you, what, the way you changed the rules was so that schools couldn't say you've got to buy it from one particular supplier with one particular brand, uh, allowing uniforms to be cheaper. So my question to you is, I'm sure everybody will applaud your, your, uh, your result in changing the law. Are schools following the new law? Um, there's some great examples of schools that are following the law that have consulta uh, done consultations quite widely with parents and carers. And of course, there are a few bad apples that have their head in the sand. This will be an opportunity to, to test the strength of that law to ensure, Gloria, that um, affordability is put centre stage, which, as you rightfully say, is more important uh, than ever in terms of this cost of living crisis when we look at those energy bills just coming down the line. And just give, give advice, Mike, if you would, to any parent or grandparent who is watching this who's still being told to buy that particular branded blazer from that, the particular school or, or outlet. What power do parents have to challenge it? Well, in, in, in the past, there was voluntary guidance where parents and carers could go to the head teacher, principal or, or governors. Now that um, affordability is written into law, the, the, they must ensure that school uniforms, and that includes PE kits as, as well, are affordable. Not only do they have the power to go to the principals, the head teachers, the governors, but also to the Department for Education and the Secretary of State. Branding must be kept to a minimum. Um, that where there's single supplier relationships, tendering must be introduced to bring in competition to bring costs down. It's also written to the law about establishing swap shops, which many great schools are, are doing in partnership with, with parents at the moment. Um, again, to ensure that actually it'd be good for the environment, also good for the pocket as well. OK. Emma, let me turn to you, because even if the new guidance is properly followed, and um, Mike seems fairly optimistic about that, but there'll be parents who just simply can't afford a uniform despite the new guidance. Um, and you're doing some interesting work on that, Emma, your charity. Tell us about that. Thank you. Yeah, at First Days, we support families who have really got no other choice. They just simply cannot afford um, the uniform that the school is asking them to buy. And sadly, we've not seen any change at all in any of the schools we work with yet. Um, we're still having to find these logoed, branded items for, for most children. This year, so far, and we've still got another week left of the summer holidays before term starts, we've supported over 400 children whose parents simply would have no other option of what they can afford when it comes to school uniforms. And that is providing them with all of those things that are overly expensive, like blazers and PE kits with logos on, trainers, shoes, all those things that are just absolutely unaffordable. And this will only get worse now as the cost of living crisis deepens. And, and Emma, I wanted to follow up on that, on the kind of people you are um, helping. Are they working parents? Or large yes. people who are not, that they're largely working parents. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're based in Wokingham in Berkshire. So it's a very affluent area. But obviously, there are lots of people who live here, who have lived here for a long time, who have family here, who are in low paid jobs, and they're just struggling to make ends meet. So over 60% of the families we support have at least one parent in work. Um, others are, you know, dealing with children with disabilities and all those things that prevent them from working. But, you know, ultimately, the majority of the parents we support are those who who are in those lower paid jobs, who are working all the hours they can to pay for food and bills and childcare and all of those things. And the school uniform is just a step too far in the household budget. Mike, I'll tell you one thing uh, that happens now, which didn't happen when you and I were at school. The proms, the World Book Days, all of those things. And I, I mean, I was a free school meal kid. I know that those days would have been utterly traumatic 
for me and my parents. Is, are you concerned about the proliferation of these days? Absolutely. And I've seen it with uh, academisation and, you know, that if a child walks, then we need to brand <laughs> every school item. Uh, I'm from a very similar background to you, Gloria, as, 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 as you know. And, uh, and no, didn't face those pressures, face uh, significant uh, pressures in terms of the family budget way back in, way back in the 80s. But but my God, as you rightfully say, that this has become crazy. It's, it's a, I know it's been used in, in regard to somebody else's phrase recently, but it is. It's a, it's a holiday from reality, isn't it? Reality of what people are facing in the community. Emma, is that the sort of thing that your organisation campaigns on? Does it concern you about, about, about people of being able to afford or be sort of poverty shamed, really, if you can't afford to go to school on these days? I, I didn't even... Well, probably shouldn't say this, but even on where you're on close to school day, I often didn't, didn't go because I didn't have good enough clothes. Absolutely. It's a huge, huge problem. And, you know, what we do is try and fill the gap. So we provide children with the dressing up clothes for World Book Day, but we would really like to not exist as a charity. You know, we believe that every parent should be able to afford the basics for their children. And also schools need to play a part in making the school day affordable. You know, charities like mine should not be here to fill in the gaps, to cover over, you know, elitist school policies and things that just prohibit children from participating in school life. You know, there's been, been some brilliant work done in Scotland on the cost of the school day. And we'd love to see that in England as well, where the day has to be affordable for every single child because it causes parents huge levels of stress when they're having to come up with dressing up clothes. And as you say, wear your own clothes to school day and give a donation and bring this in for this event and all of that. It's, it's huge and it causes so much stress and definitely causes you know feelings of inequality in children which has a huge detrimental effect on their potential their mental health how they feel about themselves which you know will have a knock-on effect throughout their life so definitely so much more needs to be done to make the school day affordable for everyone really enjoyed talking to you both um, really pleased that we covered this issue it won't be the last time sadly uh, but good work from both of you emma cantrell ceo of first group children's charity and labor mp mike amesbury thank you both for your time next we've